Amen. Amen. Mighty God, we thank you. We appreciate you for who you are, for what you are, for what you've done, you are doing, and you're about to do. We commit the ministry of the truth today into your hands. We receive establishment of our top direction to our steps, manifestation of your will today and take authority over every contrary imagination personality situations things that arises against the knowledge of the truth in this place Amen. and i decree that let every such need bow to the authority of the truth in christ mighty name Amen. thank you god because every truth that will come for today will come forward with great dynamis. Amen. Confirming this truth in the life of every era that connects today. Amen. Thank you, God, for by the time we are done in your presence, it will be another mega testimony God, to the place of your Amen. In Christ's mighty name we worship. Amen. Amen. Let all of God's people out there, the hearing of my voice, declare loud, Amen, please. Amen. We most welcome people of God out there, and I believe all the brethren and the saints worldwide, the reception is perfect where you are, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We most welcome. And I believe our brethren and the social media are all good with receptions, please. Because, like, I always tell us one of the things that Christ brought is responsibility. And because the bulk stops at my table, apologies for the late start up once again. But I assure you, as usual, the remaining time. It's going to be spent very well. Mm -hmm. I hope we all have our service links and chats updates in our devices and mailboxes, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I hope uh, you subscribe to our channels and encourage our words to do the same. Please feel free to share this truth. For this truth is for everyone. Please, if you can see what I'm sharing on the screen, please do me a great favor by letting me know. Please, please turn your scriptures to Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8, please. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. And in this passage of the scriptures, we'll see what I've said is a mainstay of the truth in this place. And like I always tell us, not because we want to stand different, but because we want to stay true. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8, please. Are we there, people of God? Um, yes, sir. Can we see what yes, sir. sharing on the screens, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8, reading from the King James Version of the Scriptures, it says, For we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. And then the foundation of this truth as the first level of understanding have told us rightly 
that there are four absolute words in this passage of the scripture. The word we, the word nothing, the word against, and the opposite of against the word for F O R. When we amplify these four absolute words, what the Spirit of God is saying through Apostle Paul is for none of us, any of us as well as every one of us, adult humans, which are the three words that the word we means, can do absolutely nothing, zero percent, against the truth. But everything we've done, we are doing now, we are going to do in our existence, will always be for the truth. I hope we all got that people of God where we are placed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Moving to the second level of understanding of this truth. Because there is nothing in existence that is in existence without a reason. There is a reason why this scripture amplified is the truth. There's a reason why none of us, any of us, as well as every one of us can do nothing against you. But everything we've done, we are doing, and we're going to do is going to be for the truth. And moving on to the level three of understanding. The reason why none of us can do nothing against the truth but everything we've done we're doing and we're going to do is going to be for the truth is because truth is the most powerful male gender entity seed entity raw materials entity or software entities in existence i repeat then the foundation of this truth apostle paul says for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth and because of the four absolute words, we nothing against for here. What Apostle Paul is saying is for none of us, any of us, as well as every one of us adult humans can do nothing against the truth. But everything we've done, we are doing now, we're going to do is going to be for the truth. The second level of understanding says, because nothing is in existence without a reason. There's a reason why none of us can do nothing against the truth. But everything we've done, we are doing and we're going to do is going to be for the truth. And this third level of understanding says, the reason why this is so is because truth is the most powerful. Male entity, seed entity, raw materials entity, or software entity in existence. The fourth level of understanding. When I say male gender entity, seed entity, raw material entity, or software entity, at every point in our existence, anything we've been in, any situation we've been in, we are in right now, forever, but there are always five entities, element forces at play using our five fingers of our as illustration is not a hand thing the fingers are what illustration how we got that people of god yes sir sir i could have used anything we can all relate to that is five by default okay, okay sir. but because this is easy for us to read that's why i'm using our five fingers as illustration how we are good with that people of God. Yes, sir. And to understand yes. this fourth level very well, starting from the tongue to the little finger, we have the entity of fatherhood, which is dual gender in nature, the entity of motherhood, which is genderless in nature, then the middle finger illustrated entity which you are interested in, the male gender seed raw material or software entity then the fourth finger illustrated entity which is the ground entity and the little finger illustrated entity which is the 
female result or product entity. Of course, in explaining this fourth level of understanding, how does these five elements always in existence in any and every situation prove Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8? The first proof is that because the male and gender entity is the, the middle illustrated by the middle finger, and when you have a long span of being to carry, the best to, way to carry it is in the middle. That means that this male gender entity carries the fatherhood and motherhood that comes before it, as well as ground and result that comes after it. So that makes it the most important of these five entities. Because there are situations whereby the top illustrated entity is the greatest. There are situations whereby the little figure, the result you are having is the greatest. But whatever the situation is, this middle figure is always the most important because it's the carrier of itself and the other four. How does this prove Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 8? It's only the other four entities of fatherhood, motherhood, grand and result that truth carries that will last, that will end in goodness and mercy, that will end best, end right, end in the desired expected results. But other four entities of fatherhood, motherhood, ground and result that other main entity carries, they will fail sooner or later. They will end in disappointment, in disaster, in tears, pains, sorrow, and calamities. So that's the first rule. Because the scripture says, out of mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. That is why I always give us these three proofs. The second reason why none of us can do nothing against the truth because truth is the most powerful male gender entity is because when we look at the definition on our screen of these male gender entities, they are started by nature. What does that mean? Anything and everything in existence in our life, any and every situation we have been in, and any and every one of us came to be as a result of one male entity or the other. So how does this point of factor prove Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8? It's only personalities, relationship situations, and things started, founded, motivated, created, initiated, determined by the truth that will last. No matter the situation, no matter the condition, and we end in the desired state. But all other male entities that starts any situation. Once it's not the truth, that situation will fail sooner or later. That situation, that personality, that relationship, that thing will end in sorrow, disappointment, pain, and calamity. And the third proof that Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 8 is the truth to establish this fourth level of understanding today. By the definition of the screen, we will see that this middle finger illustrated entity, the male entities, are actually the determinant of the little finger illustrated entity. Practically, what does this mean? Any and every situation any of us has enjoyed experience, we are enjoying and experiencing today, is as a result of one male entity or the other. So how does this prove 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 8? It's only result we've gotten, we're getting right now, and we're going to get that as a result of one truth or the other, which are actually life's principles, life's law that is created, that is designed to make that area of life to function the way it's supposed to function. 
in such results that will last. No matter the result any of us are enjoying today, once it's not as a result of one truth or the other, it's going to feel so now or later. It's going to end in pain, sorrow, tears, calamities. So with these three proofs, I believe our faith is more than never rooted in the fact that none of us can do nothing against the truth. But everything we've done, we're doing and we're going to do is going to be for the truth, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Moving on to the fifth level of truth. There's something about existence. There's something about life. And that thing about existence and life is that all of life, all of existence is about results. Even whether you right or wrong is result that will prove you right or wrong. And what we are looking on your screen are four groups of life results from the list which is gift, which is situations that come to that ask nothing of you, but we always come because none of us can do nothing against the truth. That's why it's a gift. To the greatest, which is harvest, which have all of you plus. In fact, harvest has all of forces 10,000%. Result is 30 times you. 60 times you, 100 times you. And each of this group of results, from the lowest gift to bread to seed and the greatest, which is fruit, has the good side or the bad side, the right side or the wrong side, the positive side or the negative side. And people of God, Please note this fifth level of truth. Any, what is the word I just said, people of God? Any. any. What is the percentage for any? Any. Hundred percent. So if I've said all is the same thing, every is the same thing. And let me finish that statement. Any, every, all problems that we only of us have ever had, we are having right now, and we're going to have, is one of these eight results. No matter how severe or trivial the negativity is, it's either a negative gift, or a negative bread, or a negative seed, or negative food. And guess what? That is the reason why, if you read the scriptures, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, Prophet Hosea didn't say any of us are destroyed because there's no solution. He didn't say any of us are destroyed because God wants us to be destroyed. He said for lack of knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge of what? The solution. And when you look at this, no matter the problem, even if the worst of group is what we are facing, which is negative harvest, the solution is greater than it. Positive harvest is far greater than... Are you not beginning to see that life is good? Yes. Life is balanced. What is keeping you in the dark is your ignorance. But if you don't know the problem, you can't know the solution. 
If you don't believe you have a problem, you won't seek solution. If you don't recognize the problem, you can't. And in the New Testament, you see the same thing there. Where the scripture says God does intent. That there is no situation you face that you can't get a solution. This has proven it. Because the worst of problem has a solution. How much more? Lesser problem. Am I talking to somebody today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you see, people now ask, why isn't everything in life just the best harvest? It's because there's another male entity in existence. The way truth is the most powerful. That is how this male entity, which is your faith as an adult human being, is most important. And it's most important because it's the driver of the truth in your life. It's the only male entity that precedes the truth. That's why the highest of truth, which is God's will for you and I, it will manifest without your faith. When I mean faith, I'm not talking about religious concept. It's whatever, I repeat, whatever, 100%, you, the adult human being, embraces in your life. That is what faith is. Once it's freely and willingly, you are embracing it, you are seeing it, you are saying it, you are believing it. That's what faith is. And that's why you see all of life's challenges they come to you as a gift they come to you as a gift specifically what do I mean by the last statement which is now the highest level of truth the sixth level of understanding of this truth I always share with us. I've said earlier that anything and everything that comes to you, they come to you first as a gift, whether positive or negative. But you see, it's your faith, the most important force, that now changes them to bread, to seed, and ultimately to food. As a gift, people of God, four groups of people of situations of things will come to all of us. By group, every one of us, God's image and glory, adult humans, irrespective of your gender, grace, or race, or background, we will all have from the list by group negative people, negative situations, and negative things we don't expect and we don't deserve come to us. Positive and negative people, situations and things we expect but we don't deserve come to us. Positive and negative people we don't expect but we deserve they will come to us. As well as the only one of this gift that is God's will. which are positive people, positive situations, positive things we expect and we desire come to us. But listen, people of God, these four groups will come as gifts. This, 
I need to emphasize that so that we understand that. They will come as what? Eat. Maybe for it to really eat us. Right? Itemizing the kind of people, situation, and gifts that will come to us. That's all life will give us. That's why all this foolish talk, stop it, stop believing it. That God is what will make things happen. You are an adult. The moment you become an adult, what comes to your life is you determine. Start taking responsibility. It's because of you you are in that bad marriage. It's because of you you have the wrong wife, wrong husband. It's because of you, you follow the wrong pastor, you are pastoring wrong people. Because you are an adult. It's because of you, you are saved. It's because of you, you are not saved. Because no matter what it is, from the worst to the best, every one of us has gifts. We have negative people, negative situations, negative things we don't expect but we deserve come to us. Followed by negative people, negative situations, negative things we expect, but we don't deserve to come to us. Followed by negative people, negative situations, negative things we don't expect and we don't deserve to come to us. As well as positive people, positive situations, positive things we expect, but we don't deserve to come to us. As well as positive people, positive things, positive situations, we don't expect, but we deserve come to us. As well as the one that is God's will. Just sixteen percent. Are you beginning to see seriousness about life now, people of God? Yes, sir. It's only seventeen percent of people, situation, and things. That has God's backing. Take 70 from 100. What do you have? 83. That means that 83% of what comes to us is not God's idea. It's only 17%. If I is by abbreviation, it goes to 17%. It is 16.66666. And those are positive people, positive situations, positive things you both expect and desire. But note, these six things come as gifts. How do they say they come? As gifts. As they gifts. come as gifts. Whether positive or negative, it doesn't matter. Whether the worst or the best, they come as gifts. That is why people who don't understand these people get deceived to believe that there is no God. Some go to another foolish extreme that is God that made it happen. It is you. Which is why I keep on telling you, if God gives to you, it's not the best in your life. Is it not people's gift? Is it not Satan's gift that can be the best? Is it not somebody else's prayer or cause or blessing? It is you, your faith. When you receive any of this, even if you lose it after reception, even if you use your hand to destroy it, it's your faith that transforms it into bread. Once you receive it, once you see it as yours, it's like somebody insults you and maybe calls you idiot. Once you respond to it, that the person is talking to you. You've upgraded it. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, let me tell you this. When yes, somebody sir. says something wrong to you, people of God, do you know why you're angry? Why, yes, sir? Because you have faith in the person. If you don't have, if you don't have faith in the person, you can never be angry. 
Imagine somebody who is mentally challenged. You don't know from others. Say exactly the same thing to you. Will you react? No, sir. No, sir. Will your feelings be hurt? No, sir. Have somebody learn from this. You are the one holding yourself down. It's not that person. When you are afraid of people, it is your faith in them that makes you to be afraid of them. You are the one that put people in that pedestal in your life. Because once you receive something, it becomes bread. Then when you now sustain it as your own lot in life, That's why let's wake up from this foolishness, people of God. Yes, sir. You are saying it's God's will to say to somebody in the name yes, of marriage, she dead to us back. That's foolishness. None of us, no matter how much you need a job, if you see a cross in the job you're about to start, that you are not going to leave this job until you die, will you keep will you still take the job? Somebody answer. Yes, sir. And yet, no, sir. say to another human being that I won't leave you until I die. You won't leave me until you die. And this is a relationship that you will spend money on one another. The one whereby you make money, you won't take the job if they say you won't leave until you die. They will the most people die on the job because they love the money. Money is their God. But if they were to see you won't leave this job on Twitter, they won't take it. The one that you are spending money, not making money from. They are saying the dead do you part. I wonder what other definition of foolishness is greater than that. I hope I'm talking to somebody today. So, this is what Prophet yes, Abacok and Apostle Paul. In Abacok chapter 2, verse 4, Galatians 3, 11, Romans 1, 17. Hebrews 10, 13 yes. said, Every one of us either will live by our faith. Listen to me, people of God. Nobody is doing you. I'm not saying people don't hate you. But no matter the hatred people have against you, it's a gift. The reason why it has effect on you, because you have faith in them, in faith in what they said, that's why you upgraded it. It's the upgrade as bread, seed, or harvest that is shaping your life today. See, I'm a living proof of what I'm sharing with you. I've had it rough to the closest quarters. I've had people literally wish me dead. Wish I give up the ghost out of the level of hatred they have for me. Am I not standing today to the glory of God? But should I tell you the truth? If I had received those gifts, those people had for me, I would have been translated. I would have been in memory. That's what happens. The highest force in your life, the most important force in your life, people of God, as an adult, is your faith as an adult. Let me show you some scriptures so that you'll be able to understand that I'm not just making these things up. Let's go to Poland edition, Ephesians chapter 3, please. Ephesians chapter 3. Let's see what Apostle Paul says in verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Are we there, please? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now look at what Apostle Paul says here. He says, Now unto God that is able to do. See what 
Apostle Paul says, God is able to do exceeding out abundantly, which is like a million times everything we ask or think. But that's not where that statement finished. Where did it finish? According to what? The power that works in us. You see how faith works with the truth now. This is why I keep on telling you, when you understand this principle, people of God, you will never pick a quarrel with anybody. No matter, even the big quarrel with you, you will walk away. You will just smile and move on. It's your sentiment that is making you to take this rubbish in your life. The name of religion, in the name of marriage, in the name of family, in the name of friendship. It's your faith. It's your sentiment. Not God at all. There's no God in it. It is totally you. And let me tell you, people of God, there's nobody in your life as an adult that you revert today that you can't forget about tomorrow. What did I just say, people of God? Can the brethren in the center hear me? Yes, sir. So if you can yes, hear me. I was breaking. Yes, sir. Okay, let me repeat what I said then. I said, as an adult human being, man or woman, unsaved or saved, flock or pastor, publisher, assistant or handmaid, Elijah or the pastor, Moses or the pastor, or conventional adult or special adult. There is nobody in your life today that's so close to you, closest to you, that tomorrow can mean cannot mean nothing to you. That is the ability we all have. So do we hear that now, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. It's not because people are right yes, for sir. you. People are nice to you. That you can't do without them is your faith that makes you not be able to do without them that's why sisters what you are calling god in that relation is not god it's your faith it's your emotions it's your sentiment god might be there but it's not because of god you can't walk away it's your sentiment in that spiritual relationship even family relationship that is it that's why the reverse is also the case. The way when you have faith in people, no matter how bad they treat you, you won't see it, you won't walk away. The same way, when people don't have faith in you, there's nothing you will do for them that will matter to them. Because they're adults. You'll be so surprised if you die for them from eternity. You will see how they will live their life as if you never existed in their life. There will be people you will starve for. And they will eat and overeat and even waste food in your presence. Yet you starve for them. Why you did that is your faith in them. Not their faith in you. That's what the scriptures encourage us to look before we leap. If not, after you leap, you will find that you're on your own. That you just jump for nothing. They have a ladder they were ready to use to climb up. That's it. I remember a story 
growing up that happened with my biological dad of blessed memory. Working in civil service then, that was a particular year I got a promotion, a major promotion. And guess what? One of the people that greeted him, congratulations, put like a charm on his hand to shake him. And after this man shook him, my dad's right palm started decaying. About 24 years ago, when the great man went to be with the Lord, you know, sometimes when some people have people like your pastor as a child, you have a naughty person. Me and my siblings, we went to the cops, we wanted to see whether this car was still in the spam. So we opened the pump to see whether this car was still there. Now, that's somebody wishing you congratulations. Yet, that's adult human beings for you. I hope we are getting these foundations, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The least in your yes, life sir. is what others give to you, including God. The highest in your life is what you sow, what you give to life, give to people, give to situation. That is the greatest in your life. See what Apostle Paul says here. He said, even though can, God can do mega of what we think or ask, is going to be in line with the power that works in us. That's why you see, you sisters, it's your faith that believes you don't have a life outside that prison you call marriage. It's your faith, God's look. That makes you to believe you don't have a life. As a that religion, that's a denominator, that a relationship with that pastor that you can't have a life without. That outside your family, you can't have a life. Outside your tribe, your religion, you can't have a life. It's your faith. That's how powerful your faith is. See the scripture. Let's look at Apostle John's account. Go to first. Episode of Apostle John to the church. Chapter 5, verse 4. Look at what Apostle John says here. Four John chapter 5, verse 4. Are we there, people of God, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, see the truth part. The first part of which is true part. He said, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. What this means, whatever has God's DNA, whatever came as a result of truth, whether a person, whether a situation, whether a thing, it will always overcome. But this scripture didn't stop there. After the colon, you see the word and, which means it's together. You know, and what you say, and this is what the victory that overcometh the world. This is the pathway by which you will overcome. Even what our faith did he say, even God Almighty? No, sir. Did he say, even Holy Ghost Fire? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Or did he say, even your enemy must die by fire? No, sir. No, sir. Said, even our faith. For example, now, the season of fasting is going on with all the three cousins at the moment. They are cousins. The Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims. They are cousins. 
Don't let any of the three of them deceive me. They are all cousins. But none of them reflect Christ. And I told one of them in the Christianity branch, I said, the intensity, the dedication you give to this fasting, if you are to give it to using your sound mind, if you are to use, give it to being hardworking, if you are to be to have art for people, empathy, if you are to give this to fulfilling your purpose, this world will be a better place. Everything is faith-based. That's why many of us today, we are suffering, but we are smiling. Listen to me, I keep on telling you, if you feel comfortable with this message today, it's your faith. It's not because I'm a truth teller. It's not because I'm fulfilling my purpose. That's why there are people who don't have faith in this. The more I'm talking, the more they are mad with me. The more they are saying, turn that fire in. But at the same time, people that have faith in this truth, the more literally they fall in love. That's why over these 41 years, seeing this truth, I've had exact replica of result on both sides, positive and negative. I've had brothers, men, who have walked away from the wrong relationship because of the truth. And I've had brothers who have turned their back on me because the truth affected their relationship. They choose to cut me off. I've had women exactly the same thing who cut me off because of their marriage. And I've had women who cut their marriage off because I've had parents who turn their back on their adult children because their children are aligned with these truths. And I've had adult children abandon, cut off their parents because their parents. I've had people lose their job because of these truths. And I've had people lose me in their life because they want to keep their job. It's a faith thing, people of God. I hope we are beginning to understand this better now. Yes, sir. Remember in Luke chapter 18, read it in your study, the woman with the issue of blood. Please, the brethren that the centers will be responding so that we will know the reception is getting to your end. When you read that story in Luke chapter 18, this woman had had continuous menstrual flow for 18 solid years. Can imagine how pale she will look next to skeleton. When she touched Christ, in fact, you do not miss left Christ. That's how Christ knew somebody touched. But you see, when this woman thinks King Christ is the typical religious figure who will step on now, who will maltreat her, Christ said, Relax, woman, it's your faith that did it. That is how faith and truth work together. But you see, it's not only the truth. That disaster that is working for you today is also cause of your faith. When negativity comes to all of us, it comes because we turn our back on the truth in that area or we embrace a non-truth. That's why negativity happens. And positivity only happens because our faith embraces the truth. No other thing makes things happen. But like I always say, two ways to get it wrong. But only one way to get it right. That's why it's so easy for people to miss, miss it than to get it right. That's why a lot of people are missing these things. That's why religion will tell you a lie. It isn't to tell you a lie. 
Because religion will tell you that, oh, it's God that decides. Or your religion will tell you it's enemy that decides. Or it's Satan that decides. Or angel that does. Nature that decides. That's a lie. It is you that decides. But the atheists who don't believe in God, they say they believe in themselves. But you see, your faith will have to believe in something. So this thing get it wrong. That's why the religious people will make mockery of them. The way they are making mockery of religious people. That's why they are the first cousins. The religious people and the atheists are first cousins. But all, oh no, second cousins. Then all religions are first cousins to each other. So instead of fighting your first cousin, your flesh and blood, because you both have the same DNA of foolishness. I hope somebody is still out there hearing this truth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I want to believe we all understand the balance between these two today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if we do, then let's move on. In checking some truth codes that establishes what I've just shared with you. Now none of us can do nothing against the truth. Because truth is the most powerful main entity in existence. But truth is, even though the greatest, the most powerful, is always preceded with the most important force, main entity, which is your faith as an adult human being. And that is why the result you are having today will either be a gift, positive or negative, a bread, positive or negative, a seed, positive or negative, or the greatest, and that is positive or negative. Of course, when we start this session of this truth, we always start with this foundational truth. It's foundational because it summarizes all the six levels of truth I've just shared with us today. Which in Psalm 82, verse 6, King David said, and Christ repeated in John chapter 10, that you, the adult human being, you are the Almighty in your life. You are actually God. That's why it's an insult even to you. When you go to brick and mortar. Yesterday I saw a great woman. A woman I respect so much. But what I saw yesterday wanted to make my heart to beat. Remember what I've told you, people of God. What can exist? Please listen, please. What can exist is you being free or lazy an idiot, nasty, or disobedient. But once you are not free, those other ones do exist. The same way too. What is in existence are people that are free but lazy. You can never see Somebody that is not free, that is hard working, it doesn't exist. The same way, what exists are people that are hard working or stupid or foolish. You can never see somebody that is lazy, that is smart. Moving on, what is possible? Is people that are smart but very nasty and wicked. But what they are trying to teach you, women, that your mother's in error raised you to believe that you can be nice without being smart, it doesn't exist. That's why you end up being slaves. 
because people can be smart but nasty or wicked doesn't mean the reverse is in existence that you can be nice yet you are foolish it doesn't exist once you are foolish anytime you want to be nice you are going to be somebody's slave that's what happened to an average ghost flock that's why they are slaves to their pastors that's why women are slaves to men that's why what christ says that once a man rules over you as a husband it's a cause just like the highest to doesn't exist because you see people disobedient doing the wrong thing even though they are nice they are nice hearted doesn't mean you can be a nasty person and God will use you it doesn't exist so I hope that thing I just shared with us sticks with us all people of God yes sir So this foundational code, yes, sir. as usually said, once you realize the power of your tongue, as <laughs> hey, once you realize what you say freely and willingly, as an adult, you won't just say anything. That's why there are things people have said as adults. And they're living to regret it. Because there's nothing like I do talk. Once it's coming freely and willingly, you know, that's why you have people who are pure souls yesterday, they become dark souls today. Because of things they said. The next one says, when you realize the power of your thoughts as an adult man you won't just entertain anything because your consistent straight line thought makes you the kind of person that you are that's why you have people that have become nasty ungrateful people it started with their thoughts when those thoughts were coming in as a gift they didn't stop it they made bread out of it. They made seed out of it. And suddenly it became harvest. That's why you see people do ridiculous things. You begin to wonder how would this person and this person say qualification do this. It's gotten to a point they can't stop it. When it was got coming as a gift, they should have stopped it. But they got carried away. That's why I, I'm blessed with people around me. No matter if you like, kill them. They're not going to back off. They too got to that point by sowing the right seed by their faith. But they're also reverse of people that the way you see me, we, we have to hear my name alone. We think I'm actually Satan incarnate. It's the power that all of us have as an almighty whenever we become an adult. And the third one says, once we derive the power of your presence as an adult, you won't just be any. It's true because you are carrying light or darkness to where you go. Goodness and mercy are going to follow your calamity. Especially when you're in relationship, when you're in fellowship with people, when people are your friends, when people render service, your you are rendering service to them, when people are following you as a mentor, you are following somebody as a mentor. When a woman is your wife figure, or a man sees you as wife figure as a woman, when people see you as their pastor or you have the privilege to pass to people. You are never the same with people. You are never neutral with people. You are either a plus or a minus. Because of this principle, 
that we learned in game two. So let's go with fellow foundational cooks. The first one today, I call it Satanic Ignorance's Truth. And when Apostle Paul says we should not be ignorant of the devices of Satan, many people who is damaged by religion think he's their next door neighbor. He's their family member. He's people of other, their first cousins in religion, other religion. No, 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 no. It is ignorance of the truth. Which Prophet Hosea in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says that we are all destroyed for lack of knowledge. And Christ addressed, he said, Anytime you get this knowledge of this truth, there will be solution to any problem you are facing. See this truth here. It says Satan's greatest weapon is any of us's ignorance of God's word, the truth. Very, very true. But this is very golden. And I hope we start this truth in our so consciousness, people of God. Yes. I hope the brethren at the centers are good this in reception. Yes, yes, sir. The next one has called it sad reactions to truth. Thank you so much. Sad reactions to truth. And it says, sometimes people don't want to hear the truth because they don't want their illusions destroyed. That's where faith comes in again. It's faith you use to acquire truth. It's faith you use to also keep truth. People do this to the truth. It's called the illusions have become seed. This is how you know whether something has become seed to you when you fight to keep it, when anything that runs contrary is a level of it. How we can see the example of when something has become seed in our life. Yes, That's yes, how, when you are protecting yes, somebody that you are in a relationship with. It's because that person has become seed in your life. Is beyond bread, which is you receiving that person, dating that person, marrying that person. This is power of faith. That's why you see people. Christ said, He said, None of us are too much. We straight away change. And we say the right is better. Is the old will be saying. Is better. Is the wrong? It's not because we don't know. It. It's our faith in it. It has become seed, and seed is higher than that one you want to just not to talk God. It's even still coming as gift, and yeah, this wrong thing has reached seed. That's why it's difficult. Not as if it's a lie. Not as if the relationship we are in is right. It's because it's become seed. That's why you have a lot of people in this part of the world. They find it difficult to cut family ties because family has become seed. That's why. I hope this helps us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The next one, I call it problem solutions truth. And this goes to illustrate what I said earlier in the service about you taking responsibility. Realizing that the solution is in your hands. It will not happen until you take a step. And this is, we cannot solve our problem with the same thinking we use when we created the problem. You see, both ways is you are in charge. That's why this is truth. But people don't take a they will say, no, no, they are not the one that created it. You are. You know, it won't affect you. Sometime ago, I was counseling an upcoming great guy who was having some issues with his best wife, his best half, his wife. 
I hope you have what I said. It's you, sister, that can be a man's best half. If you are calling a man your best half, that's your master. <laughs> you are a slave. That's why I've challenged you, sister. None of you have come yet. You will still be doing this ignorance and damage in your life. I said, show me that a man who is not a faithful minister, who is not a special adult, can be a blessing to you. He doesn't exist. No matter the money they give you, even if it's over a billion naira, it's about a million dollars. They still didn't do it. It's themselves they blessed. So I hope this quote really encourages our faith to take responsibilities, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The next one, I call it hilarious sound mind truth. Hilarious sound mind truth. And I hope all, all of us can see the truth here. Yes, sir. It's not because something is serious sounding or hilarious yes, and make it true or not. It's the content. And why I like this one? Because it addresses racism, tribalism, religious bigotry, everything. In fact, if I know the source of this inspiration, I would have the person add more to it. But let me start. What he said, no one needs to be less white, black, or brown. Please just focus on being less dumb. Let us but it's the truth. And so that things can be bad. No one needs to be less. Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa. Just focus on being less dumb. No one needs to be less married, single, or divorced. Please just focus on being less dumb. Nobody needs to be less Christian, Muslim, atheist, religious. Please just focus on being less dumb. Which is Apostle Paul's message. Which is what Apostle Paul meant when he said, don't be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Okay, let me even make it more specific. None of you, God said it to you, you me today, need to be less or more shiny light material. Please just focus on being less dumb. I hope this really blesses us, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's hilarious, but it's powerful. The next one, which is like a first cousin to it, hilarious, but equally powerful. I call this hilarious stupidity is truth. And just like the immediate past one, this looks like inscriptions on t-shirts. But if I have my way, these are the kind of t-shirts every one of us should be wearing. Maybe it will help us to begin to fulfill our purpose via a sound mind. And this quote says, I see the problem here. <laughs> I'm talking in English and you are listening to stupidity. A very good one. And this applies to many times when we just allow sentiment and emotion 
to reign supreme instead of a sound mind. And this is what the scripture says, that we should be quick to hear but slow to speak. And a great judge in the United States always say, most of the time, delivering a judgment. Madam Judy, this girl always says that she believes God gave us two ears and one mouth for a purpose. That we should learn to hear times two that we speak. This is what this I repeat that again. He said, I see the problem there. I'm talking in English and you are listening in stupidity. The next one, and this really applies to all of us, God's flock, applies to men too, applies to citizens of countries, applies to people following people as their mentor, as an example, as their leaders. And I call this evil followership truth. But this is sourced from a great personality. She is the current president of the United States. And if you also have this great leader as your contact, you will know that this is official. It's not name dropping, this is for me. And President Biden says here, he said, compulsive liars should not frighten you. That is, people that tell lies, politicians, pastors, men, men are telling you sisters' lies. That that's not what should frighten you. He said they can have no one if no one does what. Believes them. Believes them. Do you see the power of faith them. now? That means that those unfaithful pastors cannot harm you if you didn't believe them. Sisters, those men cannot harm you if you didn't believe them. Those politicians can't harm you if you didn't believe them. The president goes on to say, say compulsive believers, on the other hand, they should terrify you. Believers are the liars enablers. You see why you sisters who carry men on your head, you are more deadly than the men. Because you are the one that enable these men. You see that God's flock who follow unfaithful ministers are more deadly. The same with citizens who follow corrupt politicians, leaders, the same thing. I hope this really encourages us to watch who we have faith in. Yes, sir. This next one is equally close, of course, sourced from President Biden, too. And I call this bad followership truth. Just like the immediate one. It says, what is worse than a monster making fun of someone's daughter is the audience that laughed. This is what I say about women. A woman that is encouraging other women to go into this debacle called marriage. You are worse than those beasts, those men. Just like God's flock, who are defending unfaithful pastors, they are worse than those pastors. Citizens upholding the ridicule of fellow human beings. They are worse. 
And this is really encourages all of us people of God, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The next one, I call it Relationships Disconnection Truth. And this I like what I was saying earlier. When somebody tells you that you died there, you can't go. That's not of God. When you can walk away from God Almighty, who is another human being you can't walk away from. That's why God says, even if family will cut you off, once you are on the truth, God says, he or she will receive you. So it's just sentiments, it's your faith. And see this, you say disconnect and discontinue any relationship that makes you look small and inferior. This is what sisters have accepted as a standard. God is not in it. It's even you demands your honor and respect. And if a woman is to make a man look small and if you can trust this man, we check out. Not to now talk about the one that is totally wrong. The same thing spiritually. See, Apostle Paul, the faithful woman, tell the pastor Timothy to treat women who are his mom's age as his own mother. Christ did that on the cross, telling Apostle John and his mom, and you know his mom, to see like this. Somebody that has not yet really reached adulthood, say it is a bishop. And his grandmother, age will be calling the daddy the Lord and he'll be accepted. It's those ones that empower them with their faith. It's them that should disconnect. How this really encourages us, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sister. Yes, sir. It's your day today. I think today's service you have been calling who Shining Life Women Day. Because you have a lot of truth for you today. I call this amazing saved women's. Remember, I've been telling you, sister, that it's, it's actually easier for you to make it. And the reason is this. Sisters, listen to this. There's nothing like my husband's blessing. What exists in life is the blessing of my wife. Which blessing did I say exists? The blessing of my wife. The blessing of my wife that exists. There's nothing like blessing of goodness of your husband or my husband. It doesn't exist. It only exists in your illusion, sisters. That's why I say it's easier for you to make it with God. Because the number of influence in your life as a woman is less than one. But if a man, no matter how much say the man is, a man must still make sure that a queen is an influence in his life. For you, a woman, you don't need that. And see this truth coming. From a queen like you, sisters, who is also a servant of God like myself. See, I'm telling you the truth. I see the truth here. It says you are complete in Christ. That once you are saved, that's all. Nothing is missing, nothing is broken. Stop looking for things. And who? Men. And who? Men. And who? Men. It's as if we don't have sisters men. in the center. Exactly. So why men. are you afraid to? Men. It's a man. Say, stop looking for things and men to complete you. You're already complete. 
You are the one that can complete a man. Not the other way around. Learn this before it's too late. And repeat again. As a woman, you are complete in Christ. Nothing is missing. Nothing broken. Because once you are an adult, the only thing you need is to get saved. And once you are complete again, nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. He says, stop looking for things and meant to complete you. Oh, sisters, this will sink into your heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And another one for you, sisters. I call this hilarious woman's truth. It might be hilarious, but this is true. In fact, I look forward to many of these quotes that are designs on t-shirt for some of you to begin to make a franchise out of it the right people will buy it and tell you that he will say what what is the truth and see this truth say a man without a woman is who it's a bachelor and look at the letter. He say a woman without a man. Not a spinster. He's a genius. He's a genius. This is the truth. I keep on telling you, sisters. Don't learn this truth painfully. If a man is a blessing to you, go and check it. The man must be a guru as a service provider or a faithful minister or a special adult but other than that it doesn't exist And the final study quote today is an example. Why an example? These examples, they come to show us how we should live as adult humans. In our being blessed, to be a blessing to the world around us. Not that somebody will take advantage of or will be zombies, be a blessing. And see this. But religion will tell you because they didn't participate during fasting, they are going to hell. These are the people who are going to make you big in heaven. See what they did. Say two guys in Australia outfit their van with a washer and a dryer to provide mobile laundry service for who? The homeless. But over here, what do you do with the homeless? You take advantage of them, kidnap them, and use them for ritual. Take advantage of them. You treat them as if they are not human beings. Say because you are fasting from when you break at uh, 12 noon or is it 6 p.m. for 40 days, your first cousin, they are only it's, uh, is it 29 days, it's the same, and you are not doing this kind of a thing. This is what is called humanity, and this is what God requires of us. I hope we are challenged to be like a living example like this. Yes, 
Because we have an assignment today, which we are proceeding to right away. Now, what is the purpose of this assignment? Is for every one of us to get to that point. in our life since we all learn by observation instruction and experience so that what we are seeing what we're hearing what we're experiencing we'll be able to ask ourselves is this truth fat consummate foolishness which crime lies or bait so that when it's only the truth that is what we will release our faith and that's how we're supposed to live And we see a quote, obviously, by a woman. But let's examine both brothers and sisters. Is this statement truth, fact, courtesy, meat, foolishness, witchcraft, lies, or bait? It says, being single is healthy and wholesome for me. If God thinks I deserve a man, then it's God's duty to perform, not mine. So is this truth, fact, God, see, meat, foolishness, which crab lies or faith? Especially our sisters out there. What do we think? Which of these eight alternatives is the right answer? Let's have your take, people of God, please. Is a bit. Why do you say it's a bit more? The first one is quite correct. But the now part, if God thinks I deserve one, that is an insult and uh, not true. Because. Alright. Um... First of all, let's appreciate that contribution, first of all, please. Like I said, this statement is made by a woman for you, woman. The answer is actually cool. The answer is actually a bit. It's just the explanation that is not so clear and i will explain why it's a bit and the proper explanation like the submitter of the answer because bait is anything that has truth or fact or courtesy mixed with meat foolishness witchcraft or lies once a positive and negative are together in a statement in a situation that's what makes it a bit because for you sisters, being single is healthy and awesome for you. What did I say for you sisters, sis? I said being single is what? Healthy and awesome healthy for and you. Awesome. Shall I even tell you something, sisters? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you are not healthy, this is what I keep on telling men. An average man too is very foolish. They keep on going for all those desperate women. No queen is desperate. As a queen, you'll be healthy as a single woman. And you'll be whole. So that is actually God's will for you. That's one of the characteristics of a queen. 
being single, you'll be healthy and awesome. But you see, the error here is that next statement that if God thinks I deserve a man, no woman deserves a man. It's men that deserves a woman. So that is an outright lie. How we understand this lie now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is men that deserves a woman. Yes. No, no woman deserves a man because it's against nature. It's male entity that deserves a female entity. In fact, even when it's a vertical relationship, like maybe a farmer to the farm or to the ground, the ground keeps on existing on its own, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the farmer that needs the ground, that needs the farm, that needs to till the ground, not the other way around. The ground is there. So the absolute truth would have been being single, as a woman is healthy and wholesome for you. If God thinks a man deserves you, okay, then it's the man's duty to perform, not you. Now, which is now the second error again. Marriage is not God's duty, it's the man's duty. One truth, but two errors. So, I hope you understand why this is a bit, please. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. I hope we are all good in our understanding of all these truths so far. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Moving on, we take some of the regular quotes because today we have some some powerful links today. But these regular quotes they serve the purpose of watering. The way you water a seed you plant it so that it will germinate very well. The way you take fluid after taking a meal so that it will help digestion. I hope we can all see these quotes on our screens, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the first one today, I call it adult carelessness truth. Because this is another way of watching that truth that you are in charge of your life. Your faith, the things you see, you say, you do freely and willingly from your heart is the most important force in your life. And he said, the real betrayer is forgetting yourself. Very true. Because if you don't have faith in people that betray you, their action will not mean anything. It's your faith in people that makes their action or inaction to have a force. So the real betrayer is when you begin to believe that your life should be at the mercy of another adult human being. Even you men that are supposed to cut a woman to steal down an umbrella, it's not by you being a slave to her. Let's not talk about women that yours is to empower. Just like pastors and power goes through. 
I hope this blesses us, please. Yes, sir. The next one, very similar to, I call this adult deliverance truth. It waters, it highlights the same truth about how important you are as an adult human being. And that's the best thing that has ever happened to you, you becoming an adult. Better than you getting married, getting saved, desired than you being born, and what, what is it is. And this says, sometimes in life, you have to accept the truth and stop wasting time on the wrong thing. This is the truth. It's that sentiment you can't walk away that is the deception. That's why I'm telling you, people of God, as an adult, that person that today you can't do with that, tomorrow it can all change. Because it's your faith. And that is why, especially when you're a female entity, a faithful minister, or a queen, or a service provider, or a special adult, be careful. Once you see that people don't have faith in you, don't waste your time. Don't waste your resources and sometimes don't waste your life with them. Because they are the ones that can make your relationship with them work, not you. And once they don't have faith in your relationship with them will never all sisters and pastors out there and service provider out there, you are here in place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> The next one, I call it adult discussion truth, with that same spirit of you discovering yourselves. And it says, be careful who you build with, because people will use you for foundation and finish the structure with someone else. What is he saying? That because you have faith in people, prove it to that they have faith in you also. Especially if you're a female entity. You have faith in somebody as your friend. Do they have the same faith in you? Do they see you also as a friend? You're supposed to provide service for someone. Do they have faith in you, seeing you as a service provider? If not, they will use the service you are giving to them for foundation and they work to they are fitting. The person that we are supposed to mentor, do they have faith in you as a mentor? If not, they will use you for foundation. It's another person they will give the glory to. And we are a true teller like me, got to shepherd God's people. Make sure you are their number one. If not, they will use you to build foundation of their life. The moment they are their two feet, they will walk away. Sisters, the same thing. Because the man is giving you a spend time with you doesn't mean he values you. Because a man when a man values you, they will do this. Doesn't mean that when they do those things, they are valuing you. Just like as a person, because somebody is supporting you, doesn't mean they see you as their number one. Even the people that see you as their number one, they will support your work. But people supporting the work doesn't mean they see you. I hope this quote really waters this truth in our lives, please. Yes, sir. The next one, I call it adults' faith potential fact. Adults' faith potential fact. And I will explain why this is a fact, not 
true. And this statement of fact says, you have the power to reject anything that doesn't give you peace of mind. Now, but this is why I'm calling it fact, not truth. It's truth about faith that courtesy of your faith, you can say no to anything and everything. But you see, if you are to go with that, it might be misleading to think that something not giving you peace of mind is a truth factor. No, it's a faith factor. What did I say? Is what factor did I say determines something not giving you peace of mind? The faith factor. It's a faith factor. It's a faith factor. It's a faith factor. factor. So that's why I'm giving this fact not truth. I hope you understand why I'm giving this fact not truth, please. Yes, sir. Because if your faith is not in something, the thing will not give you peace of mind. That's why I've met people right from the onset. The darkness in them is irritated by the light and shining. Of course, it doesn't mean I'm not meant for them. But because of their faith not being me, that's why they don't have peace of mind. So, I, I, I hope people of God we are good with this and why is in fact this. Yeah. Yeah. The next one, I call it Adults Faith Truth. This illustrates faith again. The most times, because of the importance of many of us, what we call truth is actually faith, not truth. That's why the thing is wrong at the end of the day. You will now begin to wonder, why was I so comfortable with it? It's your faith that makes it comfortable. That's why you see women sometimes say, okay, but pastor, I do, I, I'm enjoying the relationship. Why you are enjoying it is your faith. Doesn't mean you are in the right relationship. It's your faith. And this says, working out for something we don't care about is called stress. But the same thing, when we work out for it, for something we love is called what? Passion. Find definition of it. But you know, when you don't care about the thing, that's when you'll be seeing the obstacle. obstacle. That's why you'll be so sure. People have met me hearing this preaching, and guess what they will say? They say I'm arrogant. They will say I'm full of myself. And people who have a result, if you are looking for somebody who is arrogant, they certainly not this man. Because they don't have faith. Having faith in me was stressful. So the next illustrative quote, I call it adults humility truth. And remember what I've told us about humility. Even though many people mistake humility for stupidity. But real humility is seeing yourself the way God sees you, seeing yourself rightly. Arrogance is seeing yourself above what you are. 
for stupidity, not humility. They see yourself lower than who you are. That's why, sisters, when you see yourself that you need a man, the stupidity is not humility at all. Men so might be arrogant, but your own is stupidity. By stupidity, that is the sibling of arrogance. They are both opposite of humility. And this is when you are wrong, admit it. But when you are right, be what? Quiet. It's only humble people that can do that. Because it's arrogant that want to make you to want to prove a point, even though you are wrong. And not to admit it. Want to blame it on the other person. Now see the mistake Adam made. Instead of admitting, say, the woman you gave me. Oh, somebody talked to me like this. Instead of you to admit that, it's your faith or no faith in that person that made you to do what you did. And normally you see, you have study judges, the judiciary. One of the things they train them is that to look for the person saying the truth is normally the person that is quiet. You know that people that tell lies are the one that wants to keep on talking. The next one, I call it adult self-awareness truth. Adult self-awareness truth. This is still about you understanding who you are as an adult. Man, woman, unsaved, saved, block, pastor, and Elijah or Moses, a publisher, assistant, or admin. And it says, there is no self development without self awareness. You can read as many books as you like, but if you are unable to read yourself, you will never learn a thing. Oh my God, that this is still back to humility. This is still about yourself first. Remember that song that people sing you, but we sing emoji. Yourself first. God last and others in between. I hope this really helps us to discover ourselves, please. Yes, The next one, I call it adult self discipline truth. Adult self discipline truth. And this is actually Romans chapter 12, verse 2. This is 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. And even though we live in the field, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, through God, pulling down stronghold, bringing thoughts. It's not about people. That's why religion has misled you by thinking that's about people that must die. It's about thoughts. It's about your emotions. And it says, discipline is explaining to your brain every day that you need to sacrifice immediate pleasures to receive greater rewards in the future. That's why every one of us, the mess we are in today, if we are calm down and ask ourselves, does this make sense? will not be the mess we are in today. I hope this really blesses us, please. Yes, sir. Yes. The next one will be about yourself. I call it adult self-discovery truth. And this says, there comes a time when you have to stop crossing oceans for people who wouldn't even jump puddles for you. 
explicit. When people want to manipulate you, they will call you that you are hard at it. Christ never says so. Matthew 10, 16. Christ said, be smart first, like a serpent, before you become harmless, before you become a blessing like a dog. That's why you have people in the name of their blessing to you, you have to start accounting. See, a lot of men do that in the name of they are taking care of a woman as a wife. See, pastors to do that, trying to keep the flock. So how this really helps us as adult human beings. That is what you are allowed that will be allowed. How this innocentive quote has really helped us to understand the power of your faith working with the truth. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. Um. Today we have three links, which I believe we all have in our mailboxes and our devices. I will start with the second link and then the first one, which is in the video form. It's where I will end with God willing. Now we can all see this second link yes, sir. on our screen, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. I can see it. Thanks. And I hope, sisters, after today. You will never feel inferior by your gender again. Yes, sir. You will be able to yes, see sir. that your mother was lied to. Your femtos were lied to. To believe that you are inferior. And if you remember, I've told us that just Google the MTN DNA. Because the full name is Mitochondria DNA. Is the oldest human DNA ever found in existence. And it's only found in women. So what does that tell you? Contrary to what religion or cultural custom, genetics, science has proven you sisters, you are far older than any man, including your father. Not to not talk of somebody else's son. In fact, your son seniors your father, and your father seniors your husband. In fact, your brother even senior your husband. And they, they, they are related to you by genes. But your husband is not related to you by genes. Sisters who are quiet now, because I'm not telling you what you want to hear. And this article says, why do we inherit the mitochondrial DNA only from our mothers? Please read it. It's going to help you, help you understand it. And when you read it, you will actually discover what is written there. That the male seed, the semen from a man's body, when it fertilizes, the egg 
That is when all the MTN DNA dies. So sisters, you have something to be careful about. Did you hear me, sisters? Yes, sir. And if you are blessed to be a mother of the girl child, it's something to be proud of. Because the best of men is when they are boys. Like I've showed you before, genetically, you women are the most superior, followed by girls and boys. Genetically, men. at the most inferior that's why it doesn't make sense i can't something inferior being a blessing to something superior can that be possible no sir does it make sense to now say no. someone that is inferior <laughs> genetically we rule over somebody that is superior genetically. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't. Okay. The second one, also similar. Because you can also study this one just like the first one more in your study now i'm bringing this up let me explain this before you run with it and say okay i finally say you mentioned money that's not what read this story very well and what i want you to start to take from this story is that you are not the one that will determine whether a man will see you as their wife feeble. It's a man's choice. When you carry a man's matter on your head, you'll be wasting your time, your resources, and you can waste your life in the process. If this is a woman, already have four kids, and people were already saying, no man will have yet a correct man let me tell you, when a man sees you as wife figure, they will want you no matter the baggage you are coming with. I didn't say family. What did I say? I didn't say. Can the people at the centers hear me very well? <laughs> it was breaking. Yes, sir. You see, if you hear me very always respond, so I will know from here. I said when a man sees a woman <laughs> as his wife figure, he loves her, wants her with everything that is part of the package apart from her family before you carry family on your head and the reason is this the law of marriage says for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto home his wife he didn't say a family he didn't say a family if you're a woman and you are attached to family you live for your family Everything you are doing is to please your family. You are not a queen. And any man that makes a wife out of you will suffer. They can't prosper. Because both a phylogenist and queen are independent people. But if you have kids, yes, those are part of you. Any man that will seize you, will love you with your kids even if they are not his kids then even if he has not had kids before 
If it's demanding, must have its own. You better work in it than not this one. The fact that you've had kids is more than enough for any man who sees you, but not what family. And this is why it's not family because nobody chose family. So family is not part of your package, sisters. How about anybody got this place? Yeah. Yeah. And if you will quickly you say a pretty single woman of four kids was excited when she met a man who loved her and the children. You see that? And the children. You see some women today. You are invisible. You hide from a man. He says that the man can save you. You won't say you have a child before. A man that will see you as wife well, will love you with your children. And your children will be enough for him. On her wedding day, the woman said people believe she will never find love again because of her kids. Can you imagine? A few social media users in our comment section narrated how they also met their partners as single parents. And see. He said the man accepted the kids as his and played fatherly to all of them. I said one of our videos shows the man taking care of the children. So I hope you understand why I brought this up, sisters. Yes, yes. And the first yes, one today is actually a video. And I want us to listen very well to this video because you have it as you link which this is a senior citizen. And this woman reminds me of those those two great women I always use as an example because one of those great matrics has gone to be with the Lord but the other matrix is still alive and well You welcome God's people. I believe everybody's reception is perfect where you are, please. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. So, going back to where we were, you know, this video illustrates what I say about you, sisters. That when you're a queen, you're a mother. Your kids has nothing to do with who is their father. Seniors, any and everybody in your life. Not as if you monitor them when they become adults and become a commander. No. But you are an umbrella of protection. You have cases whereby women abandoning their baby in the name of the person that they want to marry. That's slippery. Or uh, you can't decide, you can't determine what you want for your child, up to even the amount of children you want to have. That's not godly. This is a woman, senior, like I said, reminds me of the two examples I keep on giving us. One of those amateurs who has gone with the Lord in her lifetime told God, I don't want a female child. God, I don't want my daughter to go through what, as a woman, I went through in the society. But nowadays, you will see women that you want a male child. And you say you are godly. Where's godliness coming from? And the other matriarch that is still alive and well told her four daughters. 
that if you will listen to me, forget about men's matter. Build your career. Make something out of your. If you want to have children, have children, take care of your children. Forget men's matter. It's similar to what this great woman. Yeah. This woman is being asked. Uh, adult daughter is asking her if there's a danger she's got to save a life who will she save between her husband who doubles as her father and she the daughter who is other an adult who has her own children see the golden answer this one this is who you are supposed to be sisters listen to this well i ask you because your husband and y'all supposed to be one you know they say when you get married that you and your husband is one and your husband comes before everybody i don't know but you asked me a question and i answered the, the way i should because if there was a way that i could save one person and was you and him it's going to be you <laughs> Why would I say him and he almost dead anyway? <laughs> I'm always gonna be your baby. Yes, always, always. And if you had to save my life or your husband's life, whose life you gonna save? Yours. Mine. Yes. Over your husband. Yes. Well, I ask you because your husband and y'all supposed to be one. You know, they say when you get married that you and your husband is one and your husband comes before everybody. I don't know, but you asked me a question and I answered the, the way I should. Because if there was a way that I could save one person and was you and him, it's going to be you. <laughs> Why would I say him and he almost dead anyway? I hope that really blesses us. That's what you call being a mother. Even see the last part. Say, why would they save him that he's almost dead? It's still you. That's what makes you sisters. Don't let ignorance, religion, tradition, culture destroy you. Turn you into a slaves. Turn you into a witch. Be known for using of your sound mind. It's men that this apostle Paul who didn't marry says there's nothing, no blessing a man can bless you. You are the one that is a blessing. That's why when he takes care of you, he's the one that will be blessed. That's what you see, they want to destroy your psyche. Like I keep on saying, prostitution is a symbol, not a crime. What is a crime is you being enslaved in the name of marriage. That is why when a man sees you, values you as his wife figure, he will take care of you more than he would have paid is a commercial sex worker for a service. They don't do us work. They don't babysit. You are doing all that. If it is easy, how come people charge a lot to be surrogate mothers, to be nannies, To be professional cooks, if it's easy. And somebody will not tell you that that's why you came to this world. Animal said, don't do that. How can you, reflection of God Almighty, and go and see the nature of God Almighty who is a maker. God has more of maternal side to him than 
paternal side. So I hope everybody, especially our sisters, we have been blessed today. Yes, sir. I like God that. And God in you, don't take my word for it. Be like the billions Christian. Go back. You have all the links. You have all the quotes. You can go back to the ministry website or on the social media and listen to this message. Examine it yourself. Like I said, don't take my word for it. Christ said, when you embrace the truth, the truth will set you free. Discover who you are. You say you have made mistakes. You are not the first person that will make mistakes and you won't be the last. What do you do now that matters? Don't let fear hold you. Fear is a bondage. It just keeps you down for nothing. It's when we talk to people of God. Amen. Of course, Amen. the real sensible practical beginning of the year start this week because spring starts on tuesday if anything should be beginning of the year shouldn't it be tuesday because first season makes a year and the first season is spring but even though with green glory calendar and whatever religious can they've scattered everything. That's not what matters. What matters is realize that life is about harvest. That's the greatest result. That's why Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. See why the earth remains. There will be seed time, which is spring, and harvest time, which is autumn. There will be summer, which is heat, and there will be winter, which is cold. So be people of light, people of God. Realize that your faith is what makes the difference. So whatever it is you are seeing, you are experiencing, you are hearing, just make sure it's the truth before you open up yourself to it. And once you discover you made a mistake, don't die in your mistake. You are bigger than that. Even people that are unrighteous, God is not interested in their death. How much more you who made a mistake? Put yourself together. Find ways to start singing a new song in your life. And you will see the Holy Spirit will rise strong on your behalf, dotting all the eyes and crossing all the T's. So we all see on Wednesday, God willing, people of God. Thank you.